please remain standing for the invocation by Monsignor Sebastian Menke. Let us pray. God our Father, we thank you for all the gifts you have bestowed on St. Ambrose College during all these years. We beg you to enlighten the minds and hearts of all those who have participated and all those who continue to participate in the work of the college. May their example be an inspiration to students, a fine example to the people in the community and throughout the world as our students go out. Bless us all, and through the work of your Holy Spirit, guide us in these trying years that St. Ambrose may accomplish whatever it needs to accomplish to carry on the work of God in this world. We ask this for your greater glory and for the welfare of your people. Amen. May I present Dr. William J. Backrow, the President Emeritus and the 11th President of St. Ambrose University, who will welcome us here this, this afternoon. <clears throat> On behalf of the St. Ambrose University family, its directors, faculty, administrators, students, staff, my wife, Mari, and myself, I welcome you to the inauguration of Dr. Edward Rigalski, the 12th president of this august institution. Never has educational leadership been so difficult and therefore so challenging as right now. University presidents have mastered the trick of smiling, even when hanging by their thumbs. But there are more times when it's a marvelously exciting community populated by stimulating people, characterized by monumental accomplishments. The changing of command has its exhilarations. I think these are your feelings as well, those of you who are in attendance on this rather chilly day. As we await the installation which ties Dr. Rogalski formally to this institution, it is my belief that our new president has a very significant legacy, and he is fortunate indeed. And that legacy includes a bright and alert student body, earnestly committed to both academic and human excellence, a faculty greatly committed to superiority in teaching, a group of directors remarkable in their commitments to the university, alumni who are fiercely proud of their alma mater, and in many cases ready to make Herculean sacrifices on its behalf. And a local community, community which has been highly supportive of our endeavors. I am personally proud of having been president of this institution for 14 years. And I am confident, Dr. Rogalski, that under your leadership, St. Ambrose's reputation as one of the nation's superior universities will grow even more vigorously. Godspeed to you in your mission. Thank you. It is traditional that a variety of groups bring their greetings to about to be newly inaugurated and installed president. It is my pleasure to present the following individuals to you for your recognition and for their bringing of these greetings. First of all, I would like to present to you the president of the Student Government Association of St. Ambrose University, who will speak in the name of the student body. It's Mr. George J. Rothan. Your Excellency Bishop O'Keefe, Governor Branstead, members of the official program and committee, Mayor Hart, faculty, staff, and alumni of St. Ambrose University, 
distinguished representatives of the colleges and universities and learned societies, and finally to my colleagues, the students of St. Ambrose University. Dr. Rogowski and family, today I come to you as a representative of all the students of St. Ambrose University, undergraduates and graduates. It is my pleasure to welcome you in your new role as president. Dr. Rogowski, your tenure at St. Ambrose can be characterized as one which has had the student's best interests at heart. On this important day in your life and in the history of this great institution, it is an honor for me on behalf of the students to pledge our support to you and your administration as we together build the St. Ambrose tradition. May God continue to bless you and your family and all the students of St. Ambrose, past, present, and future. Thank you. There are more than 12,000 alumni of St. Ambrose University. The president of the St. Ambrose University Alumni Association will speak in their name. I would like to present to you Mr. John Stuker Jergen. Dr. Rogalski, on behalf of the graduates of St. Ambrose University, I would like to congratulate you on your inauguration as president. We are not only pleased to take part in this ceremony, but proud to be here and proud of what St. Ambrose University has become. You might think that as graduates, we focus on memories of the past when St. Ambrose was so essential in shaping our lives. But please be assured that we are very much aware of the university's continuing accomplishments in maintaining a distinguished faculty in administration, in enrollment, and in financial management. Whenever we hear or read about the university reaching some new milestone or having some new success, it brings a smile to our faces. We have graduates around the world who eagerly follow the progress of this school. The continuing successes of St. Ambrose translate into greater accomplishments of its alumni. Dr. Rogalski, the graduates of St. Ambrose University are ready to help you fulfill the mission of this institution, which is to enable all students to develop intellectually, spiritually, ethically, socially, aesthetically, and physically in order to enrich their lives and the lives of others. Our Alumni Association will continue toward its central goal of fostering goodwill and maintaining social relationships among all graduates of St. Ambrose and to further the many interests of the university. Your continued successes will make our job much easier because proud graduates care deeply about their school. Please continue to make us proud to have graduated from St. Ambrose University and bring many more smiles to our faces. Bringing the greetings of the St. Ambrose University faculty to Dr. Rogowski is the chair of the faculty assembly for the current academic year, Dr. Arvella Lensing. Dr. Rogowski, on behalf of the faculty of St. Ambrose University, I am honored to welcome you as our 12th president. We accepted you as our colleague and now we pledge to you our loyalty, our trust, and our cooperation in your new role as our president. May you and your family accept the challenge that lies before you, and may God grant you the strength, the wisdom, and the vision to lead us in our endeavors to become a university. Speaking not only for the city of Davenport, but for the local Quad City community as a whole, is the mayor of the city of Davenport, the Honorable Thomas W. Hart. Thank you. Bishop Sowen spoke this morning at Mass about the St. Ambrose community. And I'm very proud to be part of that community. 
but today I'm representing a larger community, that of the Quad Cities and the city of Davenport. And our congratulations go to you, Dr. Rogalski, but more so to the nominating committee who had the wisdom to choose this man. He is the type of person that very much reflects the values of this community in himself and in the family, and his family. We're very proud of what he has accomplished. To President Rogowski, I hear that you're the 12th president since 1882. That's 105 years. Bishop O'Keefe tells me that he's the sixth bishop of this diocese. And I, I think that's a lot of reassurance. The 12th president in 105 years, I'm the 63rd mayor in 151. <laughs> so you can see the people are much kinder to presidents than they are and to bishops than they are to mayors. It's with that reassurance, President Rogalski, that we know that you will have the confidence to do the job that is before you, and we wish you well. Thank you. The state of Iowa will bring its greetings through its governor, the Honorable Terry E. Branstad. Don Muller, thank you for your kind introduction. Bishop O'Keefe, Dr. Rogalski, Bill Backrack, and all the other, Mayor Hart, all the distinguished guests here, and faculty members, students, and citizens of Davenport. It is indeed an honor for me to be here and participate in this historic occasion as we recognize and honor Dr. Ed Rogalski as he becomes the 12th president of St. Ambrose University. Dr. Rogalski is only the second layman to serve in this chief operating officer position here at St. Ambrose. Although Dr. Rogalski is a native of New Jersey, he does indeed have deep roots in Iowa as he completed his studies at Parsons College in Fairfield in his master's degree at the University of Iowa, and then his Doctor of Philosophy also at the University of Iowa. Dr. Rogalski has served here at St. Ambrose University for almost 20 years, and I'm confident that this new president will continue to uphold the fine traditions of quality education and the true Catholic traditions of this fine university. As governor of this state, I am very proud of the commitments of both the public and the private sector in Iowa to quality education. We're especially proud of our state universities, but we're equally proud of the fine group of independent colleges and universities that we have in this state and the important role that those independent colleges play in educating the young people of Iowa for the future of this state. I'm proud to say that St. Ambrose is one of those fine institutions. I've had the opportunity to work very closely with Bill Backrow during his tenure, and I look forward to continuing to work with Dr. Rogalski as he continues to lead this fine institution forward. I want you to know I'm very proud of the fact that the state of Iowa has played a role through the Iowa Tuition Grant Program in providing opportunity from, for financial support for students attending this university and others throughout our state. And I hope that in the future we can continue to expand the tuition grant and provide that kind of partnership to help the students and and I was especially proud to see 
that the enrollment at our independent colleges across the state of Iowa was either stable or increasing in just about all incidents this year. And we're very proud of that fact. And it's great to see support from the alumni and the community that are here for this special occasion. Dr. Rogalski, congratulations and best wishes. The universe of higher education in the United States, and especially in the state of Iowa, is represented today by the president of the Iowa Association of Independent Colleges and Universities, Dr. John V. Hartung. It is really a pleasure for me on behalf of the community of higher education to welcome Ed Rogalski to the presidency of St. Ambrose University. Ed has served this institution in a very distinguished fashion for a number of years and as my usual uh, work in preparing for these presentations, I've done a little research. And I'd just like to share with you a few facts about Dr. Rogalski. And the first one is the fact that his family, his wife Bobby and their five boys are going to share Ed with all of us as president of St. Ambrose and I think they're making quite a commitment and I think that if they don't realize today what a commitment they're making they will soon because of the time and the efforts that Ed will be asked to make as president of this institution. I've been told, I couldn't figure this out by his last name, that he has a considerable amount of Polish ancestry. <laughs> I have also been told that there are members of the Board of Trustees at St. Ambrose that share that ancestry. I have also been told that I should refrain from any ethnic jokes. <laughs> I will let you think of your own. I would rather dwell on such things as commitment, sharing, understanding, appreciation for community and university, the things that Ed Rogowski brings to the Office of President to challenge you, the faculty, the alumni, the students, the citizens of the Quad Cities, the citizens of Iowa, to work with Ed in his new position, to help him in the through the difficult times. You've worked with him, faculty members, alumni, students, during some difficult times in years before. Anyone who could survive the early 70s as dean of students has some pretty special characteristics. And my research shows that Ed survived that period in quite good fashion. Anyone who can survive 19 years in an institution and be named the president has some very special characteristics. Anyone who can survive a number of years with Bill Backrow <laughs> has some very special characteristics. The challenge of the presidency, Ed, is to continue in your giving your sharing and your leadership toward the continued development of these young minds. Not to be happy with complacency, not to be happy with things going along smoothly, but to challenge students to think, to challenge faculty to maintain their currency, to challenge the alumni and friends of the institution to question curriculum and programs, and con continue to work to serve this institution and higher education and the mission of St. Ambrose University. On behalf of the higher education community, I wish you well and pledge our support and assistance in any way possible.
Dr. Edward J. Rogalski, as president of the board of directors of St. Ambrose University, and with the unanimous consent of the board of directors, I, Gerald O'Keefe, Bishop of Davenport, install you as the 12th president of St. Ambrose University. Receive the mace of governance. Be diligent in your authority that scholarship may be enhanced, creativity expressed, reflection fostered, leadership developed. Receive Receive the great seal of St. Ambrose University. It is a yoke of learning, a dedication to the mission of this university. It is a breastplate of truth to examine openly the whole of creation in its history and its possibilities. Receive the blessing of God that your work and this university may give glory and praise to him. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bishop O'Keefe. And at the outset, I'd like to thank Almighty God for having brought me this far, for the glory of this day, and the pleasure of your company. I accept the seal, the medallion of the presidency of St. Ambrose University, with both the sense of pride and with humility. For it is an honor to be deemed worthy and capable of continuing the leadership of this most prestigious institution. You have heard that this is my 20th year at St. Ambrose, and I continue to marvel at the accomplishments of those 11 presidents who preceded me and who have given so much to the historical significance in bringing St. Ambrose to this particular juncture in its history. I'm especially pleased that three of them are here to commemorate this occasion with me. Monsignor Burke, the eighth president of St. Ambrose College at the time, 91 years young, soon to be 92, recently retired. Okay. Monsignor Sebastian Menke. very dear friend who is responsible for having coaxed me to come here. It didn't take much, three visits. <laughs> Dr. William J. Backrow. <laughs> Trusted colleague and friend for now over 14 years. You know, when I first accepted this position, it wasn't just but a few days when a member of our student newspaper came to interview me. And he said to me, tell me, how do you stack up against your predecessors? I wish I had the foresight of mind to have been able to respond as glibly as I might now, because I know exactly how I stack up against them. I'm bigger. <laughs> and I mean that in terms of size and weight. And as I notice when they doff their caps, I have more hair than they do. <laughs> you honor me by your presence. On this occasion, I think it might be important for us to just take a small time to reflect upon the historical significance of this institution in terms of its heritage. The institution that we know as St. Ambrose University today began as one man's dream. 
more than a century ago. The Most Reverend John McMullen, Bishop then of a new diocese of called Davenport. He founded St. Ambrose Seminary in 1882. He had a dual mission to prepare seminarians for the priesthood and lay students for the secular careers. At that time, there were about 40 students, and they met in two small rooms in what was called St. Marguerite's School at 10th and Iowa Streets here in Davenport. Today, we know that site as Sacred Heart School. There were two faculty members and two courses of study, a five-year course in classical subjects taught by Father A.J. Schulte and a two-year commercial program taught by Mr. Joseph Halligan, who also doubled as a Latin teacher. Interestingly, even commuter students were present in those days. They were called day hops. They were an integral part of the student body, and it wasn't until after St. Ambrose moved to this location on Locust Street and this marvel marvelous edifice was constructed, begun in 1885, that residential students were given the boarding option at St. Ambrose. Because it was a diocesan school with a religious mission, St. Ambrose enrolled students of any faith and nationality. And this was most unusual for a Catholic school at that time. And I must conclude that such early openness to students of other faiths is reflected in the large number of non-Catholics that now comprise our student body here at St. Ambrose with over 40% enrolled. From those two rooms and over the past 105 years, St. Ambrose has grown into the largest Catholic institution of higher education in Iowa with the current enrollment of just over 2,100 students. So much has changed, of course, but so many things continue to remain about the same. Notably, we still continue to prepare students for life through a dual focus of both liberal education and career preparation. Much of the original division between classical and commercial studies. We also continue to prepare young men for the priesthood. Today our students are men and women of all ages, of all backgrounds and ambitions and dreams. They choose St. Ambrose for undergraduate and graduate education, some on a full-time basis, some part-time. Whatever their goals, most are drawn to St. Ambrose by the opportunity for an uncommon educational experience, by the quality of instruction we offer, and by our emphasis on the Judeo-Christian values. There are three strengths that I think are distinctive. We feel very strongly our, about our students here at St. Ambrose. Therefore, our mission, as you heard John Stukajurgen relate it in his alumni presentation, is to enable each student to develop intellectually, spiritually, ethically, socially, aesthetically, and physically in order to enrich his or her own life and the lives of others. So that in that wonderful statement by St. Irenaeus, the glory of God is the human person fully alive. The mission and our success in accomplishing it rest ultimately with those who teach, another of our distinctive characteristics. Instruction at St. Ambrose, I think, is a demonstration of the fine art of teaching. By that I mean that those who are chosen to teach at St. Ambrose not only instruct, but they also commit themselves to the intricate process of learning. Individually and collectively, the faculty at St. Ambrose are devoted to imparting knowledge, to sharing understanding and experience, and opening new avenues of exploration. A third major strength, I feel, is the tradition of Christian culture that distinguishes St. Ambrose University. Other institutions may offer similar academic programs and opportunities, but St. Ambrose has set itself apart by creating a campus-wide environment that is value-based. You know, at a time in higher education when we are being accused of moral indifference, of being value-neutral, and of having failed society, much has been highlighted as in Alan Bloom's current bestseller, The Closing of the American Mind, we at St. Ambrose are proud to teach right and wrong to impart values, attitudes, and goals, and to take a stand for peace and justice. We are one of the few diocesan institutions of higher education in the United States. We feel that this relationship helps us to deepen our concern for spirituality as well as intellect. Thus, we seek to develop in every student those personal strengths necessary 
to face a lifetime of ethical and moral decisions. Our endeavor to searching for truth and pursuing goodness is to perfect in our students both the mind and the heart. With these particular strengths and a firm foundation on which to build, St. Ambrose is now preparing to become a university. To do so would require a journey, if you will, a journey towards excellence. St. Ambrose is, and always has been, a fine, respectable college. But we have a higher calling now, and we must strive to be the best that we can become. We will not be all things to all people, but it is my intention that St. Ambrose will be the best that it can be in teaching, scholarship, and service. This, for me, will define a degree of excellence. After all, if a university is not an oasis of quality in a sea of mediocrity, it does not deserve the name university. Quality and excellence are nurtured and matured through patience, persistence, fidelity, and time. So we begin that journey with, to excellence. St. Ambrose must achieve several goals. First, we must increase our endowed chairs and professorships, making a strong faculty even stronger, enhancing the academic atmosphere on the campus. Second, we must add substantially to library acquisitions and keep pace with the flood of information in today's world, thus preserving the library as the heart of the academic enterprise. Our learning resource facility must be extensively remodeled or perhaps rebuilt. I footnote this in that our faculty, I understand, had an excellent discussion on this subject the other day. This speech was written before that conversation. Then. We must increase our funds for scholarships, grants, ensuring that students with ability and desire to succeed are given every opportunity. A special emphasis must be given to the historic commitment of St. Ambrose to first generation students and to those with exceptional academic ability. Fourthly, we must improve our science facilities on campus, either through renovation or new construction, to provide students with up-to-date equipment, classroom space they need for careers in healthcare and the high technology fields. With the achievement of these specific goals, St. Ambrose will then be positioned to take an even greater role within the realm of higher education and in the service to our community as a university must. I said to you earlier that St. Ambrose will not try to be all things to all people. We will, however, focus our efforts, notably on the people that have our special needs and have a special relationship to us, our constituents. Notably, our students and our alumni, our faculty, clergy and lady of the Diocese of Davenport, colleagues at nearby educational institutions, and of course, our friends and neighbors from within the Quad City area and the Bi-State area. We, as an institution, have a special bond with each of you. And at this point, I'd like to address some personal remarks to each. To the students and alumni, we welcome you as partners in this educational enterprise. My message to you is straightforward. You are the reason why we are here. And I am mindful of the responsibility entrusted to me to preserve and advance your alma mater a sacred trust that I take most seriously. Having seen my own alma mater go, it's not going to happen here. For your part, I ask that you continue learning and be of service to humanity and support your alma mater. To the faculty, we have a faculty governance structure that is worthy of emulation. The faculty has the primary responsibility in the academic area. I encourage you to establish a university of quality and that you rededicate yourselves to its primary functions of teaching, scholarship, and service. And you have my unabiding trust and confidence in your ability to shape an excellent St. Ambrose University. To the, to the Diocese of Davenport, we have a very special relationship with you and we want to continue to advance and enhance that situation. You know, this institution is so, tight, so tightly committed to the diocese that you will see that it is immersed in every area of our work. 
Not only is the bishop chairman of our board of directors, but there are a number of diocesan officials who serve on the board as well. In our faculty, diocesan representatives, both in terms of clergy and laity, abound. And we have numerous, numerous graduates who are tied into the diocese of Davenport, both lay and religious, and priests, all who are dear and, and precious to me and to this institution. And I want you to know this is your school, and I will preserve and protect it for you. To our neighboring colleges and universities, you have a friend in St. Ambrose. We welcome opportunities to advance higher education in this area in cooperation with our public and private colleagues. You know, Robert Belli and his associates in their fine sociological study, which was printed in Habits of the Heart, point out the notion that public and private lives being at odds is incorrect, that the impoverishment of one entails the impoverishment of the other. In a healthy society, public and private can work together to create and nurture one another and better serve the public good. I invite you to join with us, working for our mutual benefit and the public interest to our community. We are blessed to be located in Davenport and these great Quad Cities, where the quality of life inspires the best and discourages the worst in us. We are blessed by many friends who have been generous benefactors and loyal supporters. For its part, St. Ambrose commits itself to continue to service the community, to insist with economic development, to help attract people and jobs for the promotion of prosperity. More importantly, St. Ambrose's single greatest commitment to you is to provide the community in the region with students and graduates who are leaders. I also pledge to do my part by working for our mutual benefit. All of you, each of you, here today can play a significant role in helping St. Ambrose to achieve the status it seeks to attain within this realm of higher education and in the service to humanity. For my part, I pledge my willingness to do all that I can and humanely can to direct and nurture this commitment to the future, this journey towards excellence. And now please permit me a personal moment. I want to take time to acknowledge those people who were most significant in my life and leading me to this moment. To my parents, who did not have the benefit of education, but knew the value of it. They said to me that we could not give you material things, son, but we'll give you the opportunity for an education, and that no one can take away from you. To my brothers and sisters, who nurtured me along the way. To Bobby and the boys, for their personal sacrifices while I studied and learned. To colleagues like Cornell Clark and Dwayne Ehrlich and Leon Kreiner at Parsons for mentoring me. To my colleagues at Iowa, Dr. Dwayne Anderson, Ray Mustin, Bill Snyder, they gave so much and taught me well. To all my colleagues here at St. Ambrose, you can't imagine how much I love you. God bless you. May I ask you to remain standing for the benediction to be given by the Reverend Monsignor Ambrose J. Burke, the eighth president of St. Ambrose University. Please keep your hats on. <clears throat> it's cold enough. <laughs> Bow your heads and ask for God's blessing. May the Lord bless and keep you the Lord let his face shine upon you and be generous to you. The Lord look upon you kindly and give you peace. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come upon you, Edward Rogalski, upon the administration, the faculty, 
students, alumni of the university, its benefactors and friends, and remain with you forever. The reception following the ceremony will be held in the South Hall Cafeteria, which is the building to my left.